Hello and welcome. For those both new and old to HyperApp, I will be your guide to building professional web applications with HyperApp 2. Be ready as we dive right into the deep end with this great hands-on course. Before we get started, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Alex and I'm a senior software developer. My experience in professional software development ranges from command line, desktop, server, and web applications. I currently work at Vehicle, awesome software consultancy located in Canada. I primarily work on front-end applications using React and React Native. I'm available on social media, and you can find me on Twitter, GitHub, and Twitch. Now that you know who I am and why you should choose HyperApp, let's go over the contents of this course. In our first section, Introduction to HyperApp 2, we'll take a tour of HyperApp 2 and learn how to install HyperApp and its related components. Throughout this course, we'll be building a web application together, starting in Section 2. To start, we'll cover the basics of getting an application from an empty file to a web page. We'll cover topics like what is a virtual DOM and how to build a minimal application. In Section 3, you'll learn all about data lifecycle. We'll deep dive into the HyperApp architecture and how you can expect data to flow through your application. Section 4 is about using controlled subscriptions. We'll continue to build our knowledge on what HyperApp does behind the scenes and specifically how HyperApp can consume data from the outside world. Section 5, continuing with single page application routers, brings us to a very common front end problem client side routing. We'll implement a third party router and also go over the steps you'll need to implement your own router. Finally, Section 6, Advanced Techniques and Optimizations, we'll look at boosting performance, transpiling JSX code, using non-HyperApp third-party components, and even integrating with other frameworks. To go through this course, you should have a modern computer and operating system. You should also have a modern web browser. For ease of development, it should support script modules. I'll be using Firefox, but Chrome or Microsoft Edge should also work perfectly fine. Grab your favorite editor. If you don't have one, Visual Studio Code is a great choice. You should already be familiar with JavaScript fundamentals and be able to build applications and scripts on your own. You should be vaguely familiar with the ideology behind functional programming. Don't worry if you're not an expert. I'll be guiding you through the more complex concepts as we go. Most importantly, even though this course focuses around version 2, you don't need any prior experience with HyperApp 1. Throughout this course, while building this HyperNews application, you'll learn all the fundamentals of HyperApp 2, from the basic building blocks, all the way to understanding how HyperApp works behind the scenes. Most importantly, as you go through the course, remember to relax and have fun. There's a lot of material that may feel contrary to how you've built other apps. And it might be frustrating at times, but trust me, it will all make sense in the end. Before we get much further, I want to acknowledge some people in the HyperApp community that helped to make this course a reality. First and foremost, Jorge, author of HyperApp. We have a great library and community from him. Zach, Wolfgang, Luke, along with Jorge, have been a huge help in creating this course and getting HyperApp 2 out the door. There have also been a large number of community members who took part in surveys and answered questions to help build this course and its materials. Now that we have the formalities out of the way, let's continue on to what is HyperApp 2?